My name is uh, Clarence Simard and I'm a graduate from the Certificate in Financial Engineering from CFE School, Risk Collecting. I'm currently pursuing my PhD in Applied Mathematics and of course I work on financial problems. Uh, the main topic of my thesis is about uh, modeling illiquidity. Uh, this, uh, this topic is uh, relatively uh, new in the, in the science literature, but uh, it is uh, becoming more and more popular. Well, the reason is uh, if, you th if we think about most of the classical model in financial engineering, most of the results are based on uh, the assumptions of perfect liquidity and frictionless market. These assumptions are good because uh, they simplify trading mechanism and they make for more manageable uh, mathematical models. And the result is that we came up with a very mature theory with uh, derivative pricing and all of this theory about risk neutral evaluation. But uh, in the need of more uh, realistic model, uh, of course, we have to go a little bit further and so to model the problem of illiquidity in the market. Uh, it is a very, very challenging uh, problem because uh, when you try to model illiquidity, uh, you have to go out of the uh, of the linearity setting of uh, the traditional uh, classical model. Um, my approach to, uh, to model uh, illiquidity is to try to uh, model the structure of the limit order book and to consider uh, an investor who uses market order. The interest for uh, this topic is mainly for large large investors because if you consider a small investor who trades small quantity then most of the time the market has enough shares to supply for the demand so we can consider a perfectly liquid market but if we think of a large institutional investor that trades large quantity then sometimes uh, liquidity in the market becomes a real problem and trading large amounts of shares can have a, an impact on the price so uh, perfect liquidity models are no longer precise enough. Uh, also, there's uh, the more and more popular uh, the more and more uh, popular technique of uh, algorithmic trading or high speed trading, where uh, you have uh, many many small uh, trades and the accumulated uh, effect of all these small trades. Uh, can become non-negligible, so the need of uh, using a model that includes illiquidity. So it's a bit about, uh, about my main topic for my PhD thesis. So what is exactly the problem of modeling illiquidity? Well, in most classical models in financial engineering, we, we suppose that the market is perfectly liquid and frictionless. Frictionless means there is no transaction fees, while uh, a perfectly liquid model means that uh, an investor can buy or sell as many shares he wants at the price uh, given by the market. For instance, the famous uh, black and Scholes model uh, is based on those two assumptions. The advantage of these two assumptions is that uh, it simplifies uh, the trading mechanism and it makes for mathematical models that are easier to manage. But if you are a, a large investor using, using large uh, big trades, well, uh, sometimes the effect of your trades on the market has a real effect on the price, so it is important for the model to consider uh, liquidity consideration. So uh, today I'm going to present you uh, one of uh, a, a model that I built and it is based on modeling uh, the, uh, the mechanism, the trading mechanism between uh, limit orders and market orders. Well, a limit order is uh, an order to buy or sell which contains the number of shares and a fixed price. 
if there is no asset available at the required price in the market, the limit order is going to be stored in the limit order book waiting to be executed or cancelled. On the other hand, market orders are again ordered to buy or sell, but they only contain the number of shares to trade. The market orders are executed using the best corresponding limit order that is present in the limit order book. I prepared a little example just to see how it works. So here on slide one, uh, we suppose uh, that the limit order is sent to sell 100 shares at 227 and 72, 72 cents. Uh, so this order is stored in the limit order book in the ask part of the limit order book. Suppose a second order, a second limit order is sent to sell 100 shares at 227 dollar and 64 cents. We see that uh, this order has a better price, so it takes the first place in the limit order book. Now suppose there's a buy limit order for 100 shares at 227 and 53 cents. So we see that the buy order and the sell order doesn't match in price, so we cannot execute uh, those orders. And here again, the buy order is stored in the bid part of the limit order book. And it goes on and it fills the limit order book. Now, suppose a market order is sent. So the market order is about buying 150 shares. What happens is that the trader has to use uh, the ask part of the limit order book to execute the market order. So here we see on the first line that to, uh, to complete the trades, the trader has to use 100 shares available at 227 and 64 cents, but the 50 remaining shares used to complete the trade are going to be at 227 and 65 cents. So in the end, the, uh, the cost of the transaction for buying 150 shares is going to be 100 times 227 and 64 plus 50 times 227 and 65 cents. So we see that the size of the trade has an influence on uh, the price per share. Moreover, we see that the market order creates a hole in the, in the limit order book. Here we see that there are missing shares in the limit order book and uh, it pulled the price away from the fundamental value. So it's going to take some time before new limit orders are sent, uh, at which they are going to uh, refill the limit order book and bring back the price towards their, uh, something we call the fundamental value. So this is, this is basically the trading mechanism that happens uh, in stock market. As we see, the perfect liquidity, the perfect liquidity assumption is not satisfied because, uh, well, there is two set of prices. Uh, we see that the size of the trades has an influence on the price per shares, uh, and so this is uh, an interesting uh, mechanism to model illiquidity. In my thesis, uh, I presented a general model for uh, for this trading mechanism and I study uh, conditions to avoid arbitrage. Uh, but now I'm gonna, for, well, for practical considerations, I also built uh, an explicit model with calibration methods so that the model could be used for numerical simulations. This is the, uh, the example we're going to study now. First, we uh, we model the uncertainty with two geometric Brownian motions. As we see, the geometric Brownian motions, uh, they share the same parameters for the drift and the diffusion, but they differ, uh, from, uh, they differ in their initial values. Here we set S0A bigger than or equal to S0B in order to have, to have a, beta, a positive beta spread. So this is for the uncertainty. Now to model the ask part and the bid part structure of the limit order book. Uh, 
uh, we're going to uh, define two deterministic functions. The first one is an increasing convex function called GA. As we see here, the parameter alpha 1 has to be bigger than 0, and alpha 2 has to be bigger than 1. So uh, alpha 2 is responsible for the convex shape of the function. Here you only have to think about uh, a square function. Uh, now for the bit part of the order book, we have to define an increasing concave function. We call it GB. Uh, parameter beta 1 has to be bigger than 0 and beta 2 has to be between 0 and 1. Here it's beta 2 which is responsible for the concave shape uh, of the function. Here, uh, as example, you can think of uh, the, square root, the shape of a square root function. Once we have that, uh, we can define the structure of the S part and the bit part. Uh, the S part is defined as F A T Y X. And uh, how it is defined, we uh, take our first Brownian motion, S T A, times the difference between g a x plus y minus uh, g a y. Here, uh, the variable x is going to be the size of the transaction, while uh, y is going to be the level of the impact. As we saw in the example, uh, when our investor trades using market orders, uh, it creates a hole in the limit order book, and it takes a while before new limit orders refill the limit order. So here the variable y is going to be responsible to measure uh, how deep is uh, this hole in the limit order book. So this was for the S part. The bit part is a bit the same. Uh, we name it FBTYX. So it's the second geometric Brownian motion times the difference between GBX plus Y minus GBY. Once again, x is going to be the size of the transaction and uh, in the case of the ask it was uh, the size of uh, a buy and for the bid part uh, x is the size of a sale and once again y is going to be the level of the impact now for this level of the impact we define two uh, two processes these uh, processes was uh, defined were defined first by uh, Predo, Yu, Sheket, and Shri in a paper in 2011 about optimal execution. The way it works, well, here, AT is uh, the level of impact for the S part. Uh, it is defined as X, XDA. XDA is uh, simply the total number of shares about, but up to time T, minus the integral of a positive function. Uh, the way it works here, we see that if we, uh, we buy more shares, then XTA is going to increase, so the level of the impact is going to increase uh, as long as we keep buying. Uh, but uh, if our investor stop trading, well, XTA is going to stay constant, but the integral is going to increase. But because it's minus the integral, we see that the level of the impact is going to decrease. So here our integral is, uh, is representing the number of new shares that are coming in uh, in the limit order book so that it brings back the level of the impact. This was for the S part. The bit part is defined the same way, except that we use uh, BT that is equal to XTB, where XTB is the total number of shares sold up to time T. Uh, finally, we have all the elements uh, that we can define the cost of a transaction. So the cost of buying X shares at time T is going to be FAT ATX, where AT is the level of the impact and X is the size of the transaction. Uh, after that, we have the profit from selling X shares, so we use the bit part of the order book. So we define it as FBT BTX, where BT is again the level of the impact for the bit part, and X the size of the sale. Uh, well, uh, as I said, uh, it is possible to, uh, to calibrate uh, this model. Uh, 
At the beginning, we had uh, two geometric Brownian motions, but the difference of these two uh, these two geometric Brownian motion uh, it is a constant time the bit as spread given by our model. So since we have the bit as spread of the model, we can go in the market to look at past data of the bit as spread and calibrate the geometric Brownian motions as we used to. Uh, then uh, we had uh, the deterministic function G and GB. Uh, G and GB represent the structure of the limit order book for the S part and the bit part at time zero. So the way to calibrate these functions is simply to look at the uh, limit order book at time zero, look at the structure, and uh, it is uh, easy to carry a uh, functional regression just to fix the parameter of functions G A and G B. Finally, uh, the last element we have to calibrate uh, is the function uh, G and H uh, that are in the definitions of the level of impact. Uh, this part is a little bit more complicated, but uh, what we have to understand is that fun the function uh, G and the level of the impact for the S part, the function G represents the number of new shares that are coming in by unit of time, knowing that uh, the variable in the function represents the number of shares already removed from the limit order book. So, knowing this, uh, knowing this definition of G, uh, it is possible to use past data uh, for the limit order book to uh, define G as a polynomial and uh, compute a calibration of the poly polynomial parameters. The same happens for H. So uh, this complete uh, this little examples. Uh, for more details, I'm gonna simply refer you to uh, the link for the papers. Thanks.